Chicago, Democratic Republic of the Congo. But I think this guy applies to any girl anywhere. People ask me all the time how I survived. It's not that I was smarter or stronger than anyone else. I didn't even know what I was doing. It was just something inside of me that couldn't go along. My friends, they got taken at the same time as me. I don't think they were. Well, one, get over that girl thing that this can't be happening to me. Because believe me, when it happens, it happens to thousands of us. You will not believe it. You'll think that these are just crazy soldiers fooling around. They must be bored or something. They couldn't be hurting me, grabbing my arms and legs all rough like this, throwing me into their truck. Your brain will start to tell you this. These are soldiers from my country. <laughs> They're old enough to be my father. They know better than this. They're here to protect me. This will be confusing. It will make you feel stupid. It will make you feel like what's happening isn't really happening. It will make you feel like you did something wrong. I watched my best friends, Esther, Elisa, and Suwati. We were on holiday. We were taking a boat together from Bukhava to Goma. We're all joking around a lot on the lake. Lake Kivu, it's like this really big lake. It takes five hours to cross it. We're all drinking Fantas and making fun of Esther's crazy big hair. We're going to Goma to swim and hang out. We went shopping. I remember Sawadi got these gold shoes, and I remember thinking that I wanted them too, but I didn't want her to think that I was copying her. <coughs> As we got out the store and walked down the street, it didn't seem real. We were just shopping. And now, these crazy soldiers, that's why they didn't run. I wanted to run, but I didn't want to leave them. When we refused, that's when we got how serious it was. One of the soldiers, the real big one, started beating Elisa, and she was screaming. All my best friends were screaming and crying. I got her quiet. That's what I do. I wasn't going to let those soldiers know anything. That leads to rule two. Never look at him when he's raping you. He will call your name in that craving, craving voice, and he will beg you to look. He will turn your head with his big, rough, dirty hands. Never move your eyes to his. Close them if you have to. He isn't even there. He's a teeny, tiny, meaningless speck, and he doesn't even exist. Rule three, build a hole inside yourself and climb into it. He'll be on top of you. He'll be old enough to be your father. He'll smell like the woods, alcohol, and marijuana. He'll hold his hand over your mouth. You're a virgin. You're only 15, and he'll remind you that no one is coming. Imagine you're dancing. Hear your favorite song. Remember your mother braiding your hair. Feel her kindly, roughly braiding hands. Hear her calling your name. Marja. Marta, move forward. Never, ever open any door to him. Reject the food he brings you. Refuse to eat his stupid fish. Spit on it. Tell him that your family would never eat fish out of the water. When you're in public, I want you to smile and act like a proper wife, even though he already has one. Never smile. Roll on the ground that ugly, stupid, expensive, tailor-made pony he brings you. Never laugh at his jokes. He'll be shoving himself into you. He'll do this two or three times a day. It won't hurt after the first 20 times. Your insides will no longer belong to you. Sometimes he will work alone. Beware. The smell will make you sympathetic. Do not give way to it. You'll begin to feel something for him. You've been a slave for almost six months. It's nothing more to do with habit or accident. It has nothing to do with Claude. By the way, never use his name. Only refer to him as him or you. You move over. You leave me alone. Rule five. His sadness is none of your business. Sometimes he will seem so sad. All the bad things he's seen and done, and you will begin to feel bad. You will feel everything he feels and doesn't feel. You have been a slave for almost two years. You will begin to think that this is your life and that he is the only person who will ever love you. When you start vomiting one morning, you will be sure that he has poisoned you. Then it will pass and it will happen again and you will realize that you are pregnant with his being. He will tell you to even think about killing him, that he will kill you.
when you run and your legs will feel strong like a strong person's legs, and you'll feel clearer and better than you've ever thought before, and you will hear your mother calling your name. Marcia, run! And you'll make the bus at the exact right moment, and you will not look out the window because you know the four bodyguards have been watching you like a hawk are there, but you're inside your hole, and no one can see you, and you will hide with the baby inside the wall, the place of your cousin's house, the place you wouldn't stay on your holiday, and Claude will come with four other soldiers. They will search and destroy everything, but your baby will not cry, and you will be invisible, and the next day you'll make it to the boat and it's pulling away from shore, and you'll see him and the southern soldiers on the dock asking and looking for you, and someone will point to the boat, and you'll know that he's found you, even though you are deep inside of your hole, and the next thing you know, the captain of the boat will be standing right next to you, and he will ask you one. No one can take anything from you if you do not give it. 